and welcome to the conclusion. So like I was just saying, political speech or speech in the clear public interest of consumers' right to information always takes precedence over purely commercial speech. And speaking of consumer rights, let's talk about what those are. So Carter Dillard, a U.S. Department of Justice counselor, says that spending money and making purchasing decisions in a free market is a constitutional right to self-expression. And false information violates this right to exercise the freedom of expression. Because if somebody were to care, say if you look over at the pictures on the right, if they were to care about uh, whether or not something was tested on animals, but a label lies about that, then they are unable to make the purchasing decisions that they see fit. Um, consumers have the right to information needed to make these marketing choices, and this cannot be done if advertisers have the benefit of lying. And what that means is that there have to be consequences and regulations for businesses when they provide products to the public so that the public can make these decisions. Um, think about the FDA, this first, uh, this top left picture right here of food label. Think about people with allergies. They need to know when there are allergens in a product so that when they buy it, they stay safe. Ethical choices by consumers regarding animal treatment are no less protected by the FTCA than choices made based on how well a device functions or how long it will last, or I say even safety. It's, it's dangerous not to know what you are buying. Uh, think about this paint bucket all the way on the right. Uh, that is actual lead paint. It's very important to know whether or not you're handling a carcinogenic product. And so moving on to a practicable topic today, the ag gag laws. So the animal agriculture industry seeks to gag whistleblowers and animal rights activists by punishing them for recording footage of what goes on in animal agriculture facilities. I don't know why this worked out the way it did, but Let's see, so the actions by animal activists going into these facilities to document the treatment of animals, uh, like a case where PETA activists infiltrated Huntington Life Sciences in 1997, resulted in um, Huntington suing PETA under the pretenses of uh, they were false advertising, they were making counterclaims to the claims that Huntington was, uh, they were kind to their animals, and Peter was saying that they weren't with evidence. And the court upheld uh, the activists, PETA's position of, of using their speech because it was political rather than commercial in nature. So far, the political nature of activists' clear public interest uh, letting people know that the products that they're buying come from cruelty. It's uh, given the legal upper hand in the eyes of the Constitution as opposed to the purely commercial nature of motions of uh, those industries. I don't know why I wrote the word motion. And look over here at this map of the United States. These are the states where, just for your knowledge, that um, ag-gag laws were attempted to be launched, but they were shot down by the Animal Legal Defense Fund. So finally, we know that the majority of consumers are influenced by goals to affect social change in an ethical way. And we know that advertisers of all kinds across every industry, they want to expand their consumer demographic to be these really influential ethical consumers, so they appeal to ethics. So advertising animal products uh, is always unethical because these common claims 
are exactly how the animal agriculture industry attempts to sell its products, but they were all refuted earlier. Can you imagine if they didn't use any of these and actually showed images like these above to sell a product? Nobody would buy that. Right? So every single time they try to sell a product, they do it with knowledge that they're using false claims. And so, we take a look at our rights again under the Constitution. Could f these false claims that the industry knows it's making, uh, could it result in the prohibition of advertising animal products? We know that advertisers do have the right of freedom of speech. Commercial speech is a form of free speech. Yet, purely commercial speech versus ideological expression and political speech kind of loses in court when it is brought up against uh, someone with evidence of the contrary. We do know that consumers have the right to information. Therefore, false advertising and giving false information is unconstitutional because it impedes that right to self-expression. We do know that activists and whistleblowers have rights to expose information for public interest and political speech. Whereas ag-gag laws that intentionally uh, go out, they're paid for by the industry and their lobbyists to shut them up, is unconstitutional. These three things happen to be directly involved in the advertising of animal products. These three ways are the ways that these claims are used to sell animal products, and none are legally defensible in court. So if any of us were to bring an advertiser, of course it would take a lot of money and a lot of representation, but under the grounds of our right to information as consumers, or they made a false claim because there is evidence to the contrary, um, and or compared to what we know, thanks to this presentation, we know that there is no ethical way of exploiting an animal. In court, we could potentially shut down advertisers one by one. We could introduce censorship through the Constitution. There is no way you can humanely use an animal. Normal isn't always what is popular isn't always right, what is right isn't always popular, and no animal products are not necessary, no they are not natural, and so these terms would be censored by the government, making it extremely difficult for anyone to buy animal products, perhaps making it illegal to do altogether. So that was my presentation. Here is my bibliography. And thank you for joining me today.